and welcome to Gag of the Millennial. A show where we talk about pop culture, current events. And spill the hot Darjeeling right into the octave nerve. Oh no, she's <laughs> dead. <laughs> Hello. Hello. What's the day? Oh, I'm actually doing really well today. Oh, good Last job. week I was softly passing away. Oh, yeah. This week she's back. She's Janine. back. She's back with a vengeance. And, she is. Yeah, and this time she is naked from the waist below. I am. You would never know. <laughs> you would never you? know. I'm yeah. actually not. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are Hi. You? I'm doing wonderful. I have a, this is a bit, bit TMI, but I have this pimple in the centre of my armpit and it's actually oh, really no. painful. Like, it's just has got like, an upset it, lymph node. It's just, from, it's just from shaving and stuff, but like the, literally the centre part of my armpit here. I also like, am betrothed with a pimple. Oh, dear. I we, know. Rotting. Uh, Hit rotting. 30 she's, and you um, rot. She's turned into the candy woman. Today we are back for a new podcast episode and today we want to talk about some updates from our last one, some yes. drama, some yes. news that's happening, yes. some weird stories, and yes. just everything that's been going on in the world at the moment, yes. because you know, this is a current events podcast, as the intro would state, but well, we never do it. <laughs> no, we never do, no. And then we do like eight in a row, and then we're like, let's talk let's about do- Victorian dead children <laughs> yeah, we for just 19 it's, episodes. It's <laughs> we're actually at some point, uh, probably maybe the next one, we should do the um, Unpopular Opinions Reddit. Yes, that was actually what I we should definitely like do. I quite like that one, yes. I think we should just jump straight I into the chaos. Think I think you stink. stink. Oh my God. Uh, uh, first of all, let's yes. get on with the update on one of our previous ones. So mm-hmm. in the last podcast episode, we did briefly talk about the Colleen... Colleen! Colleen Ballinger, Miranda Sings drama. Yes. And as I was uploading my video, it went live. And like a few hours later, she then... Is this when she posted she, this? Literally, it was like a few hours later. I woke, I woke up in the morning and I was just like, oh my God, why? Like Feeling that happened. Like Pete did it. Like that happened as soon as I uploaded my video. I was like, got it. It could have been a day earlier. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's always the way, isn't it? Drama doesn't wait for you. No, it doesn't. Drama no. waits for no bitch. So you have to be the drama. Yeah, you um, do, yeah. I'm go- I'm not, I don't want to go too far into the Colleen drama again, just because we did I talk feel, about the yeah, last we one. Did, yeah. So I want to do like a, I'll just do like a tiny recap. Essentially, if you don't know, Colleen Ballinger slash Miranda Sings is a old (laughs) is an old school allegedly be careful don't get sued Um, she is a old school YouTuber from back in the the really early days of like the early 2000s uh, mid 2000s or always like 2010 times and she had a character called Miranda Sings where she was basically this kind of childlike character who was very prudish and very kind of like she was just like bad at everything bad at everything that was kind of the point Um, but she used to make loads of like really sexual jokes which in itself was weird that she's like this child like character that would always make sexual jokes like it's very strange she I'm had no, no one picked her up on it before to be honest. Um, honestly or at least no, I weird. didn't hear about yeah, it if it's, they did. it's very strange and essentially she got famous doing that she got very big and as most people do her fame kind of dwindled a little bit but she still stayed relevant on the internet by doing yeah. like a vlog channel but doing uh, like family channel stuff so she still managed to have some relevance on the internet she was then accused of uh grooming children yeah um getting them to you know do do things for her uh asking them very very inappropriate questions about sex and relationships divulging information about her relationships and what she does with yes. like her boyfriend and everything and this so, was in like private group chats as yes, well this yes. wasn't like oh i'm just gonna say it in a video for lols yes exactly and like she like we're talking about like that she was talking to like 13 year olds as yes. well she wasn't talking up to like 17 18 which is like it's a bit different it's very different it? like having sexual conversations with 13 year olds and stuff like it's it was weird you know there's there's videos of her like bringing girls up on her Miranda Sings shows and like oh, God, like yes. sort of like body shaming them and calling them like whores and stuff and sluts and saying they look like porn and then of course they're like underage children as well so there's there's the layers of that so yes. much has happened like yes. I would say properly go research everything just because we, we have spoke about it already but essentially she had a lot of child grooming allegations against yes. her for many different people yeah in most situations when it comes to this like child grooming allegations are very serious yes and they require like a PR team response of like Mammoth proportions. Uh, mammoth really. proportions, yes. And it's not this isn't something that you would normally kind of try to sweep under the rug. Like if if I was ever accused of anything like this, someone ever like No, public I would, statement immediately. You in, yeah. Instantly like shutting this shit down. Like yeah. this is un- like I would never let anyone get away with anything like that. Even a rumor, like a shred of a rumor of something like this is career destroying. Yes, exactly. And so <laughs> Oh yeah, you, literally. How did you begin to the what like the world was shook. Like the world of the internet was absolutely shook when this video went live. So Colleen, a couple of weeks, dead radio silence from Colleen. She was still touring with her Miranda Singh show. Right and now. then she uploads this video. And this is quite possibly the most deranged, the worst, the b- most bizarre YouTuber influencer apology that has ever been posted on the internet. 
And I'm sure a lot of you watching this already know this and have seen it, but people who don't yeah. know, she came onto the internet and got did a ukulele. ukulele out and just said, all aboard the toxic, toxic train, gossip train. Don't train. be mean to me. And she just made this strange song video where she, for 10 minutes she played a ukulele and kind of like spoke sung about the situation, didn't really address anything, just made like lighthearted, shady jabs at people who were like accusing her of grooming. And she tried to equate it to being like, stop being toxic to me, you yeah, trolls. It's, it's, and it's like, no, all... actually you're a problem. I... Have you ever seen anyone misread the room so so severely, severely. and it's... just be like, oh, you think this is like a funny little lol game. Yeah. You don't realize the trouble you're in mm -hmm. for this action that you've partaken in. I, at the very beginning of this video that she uploaded, she says that her team had strongly advised her not to do this. Well, someone's and, got a brain near her then. And so she still went ahead and did this. And she was like, well, no one said I couldn't sing a song about it. And I would, it's just like, if uh, people who are watching obviously know the drama can understand Mar why we're so shocked. But if you <sighs> haven't seen in this, it's really hard to really convey to you. Just this, how deranged it is. Just deranged it. <laughs> like she comes on, sings a song on the ukulele, disregards everything that's ever said. She didn't really, she the, the thing is- Boris from Partygate just released a song with like Cascada. Like, <laughs> I wasn't at that party. I don't know what a party <laughs> is. Like. I'd see it. It would be I mean, hilarious, yeah, but we would the, be like, this I is a serious the allegation, this sir. This is serious allegation. The thing is, as well, I said that, like, if anyone ever accused me of any of this kind of shit, I would instantly shut that You'd down. You'd have to. Like, there's a difference between, like, just, like, some stupid, turfy woman shouting on me in the internet the most ridiculous yeah. things ever. Like, of course, you're going to be like, oh, shut up, you idiot. But, like, <laughs> there is so much evidence against yes. Colleen in this situation, the idea that you would still have all of this screenshots and like video clips and like all this stuff about you would come out. And the fact that you would still just make it into this like flippant weird joke is problem. like bizarre. It's, 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 it's bizarre. indicative of like something else is going on, sis. It's like, like why, why did you think this was a good idea? It's like a completely misunderstanding the situation that you're in. I yeah. don't know. I don't, I, I've never seen anything like it. And so, it was lit it's literally been touted as like the worst apology or the worst accountability video ever. Yeah, the, well, the video here almost has 2 million thumbs down. I find this situation very telling about ego. Yes. People who watch Miranda Sings, I think sometimes forget that that is a character. And yes. I think people associate her with Miranda Sings and think, oh, this person would never be crazy like this or this yes. person would never just... Yes. And then you see something like this and it's actually go, no, she, you, it's like a, it's an opening moment for a lot of people. Like that is a character. Yeah. And this is who she really is. Yes. But it gets even worse because... Yes. Right. Um, she... Strap in, everybody. Strap in. Obviously, when this video came out a few weeks ago, loads of YouTubers and loads of creators were making content around the situation. Of course. Loads and loads of channels were getting their videos like struck like mm -hmm. struck down mm -hmm. um, because someone had put the gossip toxic toxic dream song like the whole clip mm -hmm. on Spotify and iTunes and everything to sell it and because of like the music copyright system the the, it's ID really system. broken on YouTube yeah, it is, where like yeah. you can use video clips all the time and it's fine but for some weird reason if you use like three seconds of a, or like a music file you know what like, all it's, the, like so it's 11 seconds is it 11 actual, seconds yeah, yeah from my own playing around yeah. with finding out exactly what audio copyright is it's 11 seconds but audio copyright even though it should fall under the same thing as like video copyright it's astronomically small and yeah. instantly getting taken down Colleen's manager people said that it wasn't her who put it onto oh, iTunes like, and that it was not, nothing to do with any of them. Didn't she release a lyric video though as well? So that Maybe kind of gives stupid. credence to the idea. Um, but I actually have personal experience with putting music on iTunes and selling it. Back in like 2012, <gasps> she's 2013. A diva. Uh, she's a diva. Back in 2012, 13, I used to make music really frequently online. You can still go find it. It's all on my happy channel. Birthday song. Um, happy birthday to me. I eat Gats. my pussy. Um, I used, I can't remember what program was I used now, but to get my music on iTunes to actually sell it, you had to submit all of your own information, all of the song information, prove that it was you. And then after you've done all that, the song would then get, had to be like manually approved by the company yes. and would get put through like a copyright system to make sure that you're not, uh, you know, you're not using someone else's music. You're not like plagiarism. There's nothing to make sure that what you're putting up is actually your creation. Yes, 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 yes. And yes. so I've been through that and it's quite an arduous process. And this was like 10 years ago. So like the process of doing it now it would be must... a lot more strict. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. so I find it very hard to believe, and this is my opinion, I can't prove this, but I find it very hard to believe that it had nothing to do with her because some, some random person being able to just put their stuff on iTunes and sell it. Yeah. Like that's 
Maybe, maybe I am wrong and it's so different now, but when I used to try to do it back in the day, it was very long, arduous process. I just find that a bit hard to believe. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Completely agree. I think that the very reason that she was deranged enough to make a video and music video kind of thing for an apology anyway, gives credence to the idea that she had an idea for a song yes. and then is like, oh, let me monetize this some way. Or yeah. If I make a song apologizing about it, but it's somehow content ID, I could strike anyone down who's critiquing me. Yes. That's yeah. how I feel it is anyway. And I just find as well, like, if if the stuff that was said against you was so fabricated and untrue, you would be able to quite easily disprove it by yeah, just saying, this has happened, this has happened. By you doing this, to me, just says that you have nothing else to say because you can't combat any yes. of what's being said against you. Exactly that, exactly that. It's a weird situation <laughs> to have watched, I think. It's because she's still not actually addressed the situation. No, not at all. She's just kind of released this mess and then just been like, no. But what's also very telling is like a lot of these YouTubers and influencers who do this kind of stuff is like, she's also put it on her like, what her like smallest channel. She hasn't put it on like her main channel. She's trying to get as less, less amount of, uh, traction, traction as possible, as possible. Yeah. because a lot of people do it. Like I, I think Shane Dawson was another one who put it on like his when he did his apology for all his stuff and like just put it on his like little side channel instead of actually his main channel. Like a lot of YouTubers do this. Was like when happens when like bad things happen, they put it on like side channels. Yeah, they so they're like, the well, I addressed one. it, but it's like actually been like. But most of the audience the probably wouldn't see it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there was no way she was going to be able to hide from this because it's been such a huge story like yes. on the YouTube world. So. I just... But she was also quite a staple of YouTube. I mean, I've never watched her content or anything like that, but, like, I knew who she was. Like, she'd been parodied on TV shows and yep. stuff. Like, yep. she was involved in the Wreck-It Ralph movie. Like, Disney know who she is. She was huge. Yeah. And it's weird for it to be unfolding this way because, like, what's going to happen next? Is she going to release, like, oh, there's an album now? Yeah, I don't know. Like, what is, what is she going to do next? And things as well. It's like, I was watching, I've been watching lots of videos about it, and, like, some of her, like, old, like, YouTube titles were, like, <gasps> absolutely shocking. Yes. Considering as well, like, she's meant to be, like, a child, like, character and her audience's children she's like making like her like uh titles like with literally pedophilia or like talking about like un sleeping with underage people or like it's doing that shit grim, really grim it? and when you no put smoke all, without fire when you put it all together it's like i don't disbelieve and like even if like only two percent of the stuff that's come out is actually true that is enough that's like yeah there's it, enough it, shit it only on takes you. once yeah i just think it's untrue unreal and i i don't believe anything she says and this no, is my absolutely. opinion has she actually like released anything since this like, i don't think i did i did try to look but everything's kind of just gone radio silent i wonder if now she's decided to listen to her team yeah but it is interesting to know that like she was halfway on tour when this was happening wasn't yes. she? so it's all cancelled everything's yeah, like loads dead now cancelled dead dead now dead she's now. dead she's i just find it so weird that you would happily be in like a group chat with like 13 year olds yeah as an adult i like don't get children anywhere near me and the thing is, i do not make content for kids i make content for like 16 and above really yeah i and find if it that, so weird like, mm. Sometimes, maybe not. And the thing is as well, like we said in the last one, like we ha we do have underage people who watch us, but we know exactly how to speak to these people. We know exactly how, what, what's right and what's wrong and what but also is my appropriate fundament conversation. Yeah, my fundamental point is that I don't make content for those young, like yeah. super young people. So if they do find their way onto my channel, I am a bit like, where's your parent or guardian? Yeah. This, that. And the thing as well, she was asking like, some of these underage people to like send her photos of like their arse and things and stuff like that. It's like, what are you doing? Oh, it's so grim. Like isn't even it? as a joke, it's not okay. Like when when it comes Maybe to underage re people, yeah. it's never okay to joke about those it's kind not, of things. No, because they're not developed enough to no. understand that it might even be a joke to you. Yes, but exactly. But the weird thing is as well, I think the reason one of the reasons I said earlier that I was like, oh, I'm surprised I haven't heard about it before now. It's probably because she's a woman and a cis woman at that. So people are like, oh, this, you know, when I was 13, I wish someone had said that to me. Well, you know, hashtag not a drag queen. <laughs> this unhinged apology is going to go down in history is the worst one of the worst apology mm -hmm. videos ever created well it's not even an apology video it's, it's to me it's like she's like mocking people she's yeah mocking she's made people. content out of it yeah it's not an apology video yeah i could go into more detail as to more things but no i don't want to talk more about essay mm. like child essay and all that shit like i don't need to go into details if you would like to research more stuff that's up to you but just know that it's not nice to look at no, and to hear about not. and to know about which is why i haven't gone into much detail but colleen ballinger what an unhinged woman like weird. totally so ego weird. Massive ego. Why is so many YouTubers so awful? Yeah, the re whenever we watch any of these, like, oh, what happened to this YouTuber? Ten out of ten times, it's oh, they were a pedophile. They were a pedophile. Pedophile. Literally, we we so ages ago, me and like Sarah watched a video from uh, the gamer from Mars. He does like listy videos and does things about deep dives into other creators. And he did a, he did a video about like oh, hundred like arrested YouTubers or something. Yeah, it was yeah, like something yeah. like that. And like at the beginning, there was a disclaimer being like, oh, we had to actually like 
cut a lot of the people out of this mm-hmm. just so the whole video wasn't just full of pedophiles and it was like Jesus yeah, yeah, yeah. and even watching and it it, it was still like yeah it was like most 97% it was. I was just like Jesus I guess it's one of those things as well though where it's like it's a, a very fast way to get access to an audience you wouldn't necessarily have in real life yeah and anything where that happens it's the same sort of thing as like narcissistic psychopaths always go for like CEO positions yeah because it's the fastest way that they can get power oh god at this point it's hard to find a, an old YouTuber from back in the day who was like who's famous not a who wasn't a problem <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it's weird that, what's yours what's scandal mine? like Sarah? Oh, i've got a dog <laughs> So scandalous. Yeah, and she shaved it and ate the fur. We yes. have to mention the Barbie film. Oh, so yes. we. Oh my gosh, we, yes. We went to go watch I'm the new Barbie, Barbie film. Girl. But I'm a Barbie girl. Mm. I've got my pussy. So <laughs> Very we, that. Yeah, so we went to watch the Barbie film. Now, I, I wasn't really the biggest, like, uh, I, w- I wasn't very excited. I but, wasn't actually going to see it. But yeah, Cal- Callum was Callum just was like, like, I'm going to take a Barbie. Um, and we were like, okay. Callum's my housemate, by the way. And so I'm dead. went to watch it. I actually quite enjoyed it. It was yeah. kind of a bit silly. It was kind of fun. Um, and of course, it was all about, all about women empowerment, everything. Wonderful. We love to see that. But oh, I saw a tweet the other day. Sorry to interrupt. It was like, so the Barbie film is about stopping Ken from doing January 6th. What's January 6th? A, a the shooting. overthrow of the government oh, in America. No, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh dear. You were like, the, well, I don't pay things. attention to um, pop culture. But the, well, Tip <sighs> Butty. Ben Shapiro to begin with. The film is not for the, you, Ben. Oh my God. But the, all the right wing insane like, commentators have lost their, their mind. mind and have all become, but they've all become everything they hated back in 2016 yeah. when they were saying that all the SJWs, all the feminists, all, all, the, all, the, all the non-binary people media. were just like, Screaming and shouting, because they, they would always say that we were like getting offended over everything, yeah. finding it, you know, we're just making fuss for everything. Yeah. And they have turned exactly into what they were protesting back in 2016. Yeah. And so Ben Shapiro did this photo like, I was dragged to the cinema by my team to watch the Barbie film, full review coming. And he just got, he did this like 40 minute video going in on the Barbie film, how it's like anti man and it's all incredible. Ben Shapiro woke, is a and, waste of a twink. And it was, and he, one of the parts he was, he said he was talking about the the trans girl who was yeah. playing one of the barbies dr and, barbie um, he was saying like oh and there's this trans barbie and no one has any issues with it even though i'm not going to misgender them has a deeper voice than me and i was just like are you joking if i was wrong, ben everyone has a deeper voice than you oh it's just and also so he, bottom of he the made barrel this, he made it? this video of him like putting like a barbie converter with like a barbie doll and a ken doll in like a bin like set on fire and it's you know what's really funny about barbie dolls they don't have genitals so why does it matter if one's trans the thing is as well the the thing the thing about the whole trans barbie as well is it's the fact that like in in the actual movie there is zero acknowledgement or talking about the fact that the person who plays this barbie is trans yeah the barbie in the storyline the barbie the barbie in the show isn't a trans barbie it's just a Barbie. It's, yeah, it's about like a plastic Barbie becoming human. And so you're now get, like you're getting angry saying that there's a trans Barbie, but it's like you're just actually angry that there's a trans person existing. Because yeah, there's no, no, that's exactly there is it. no exactly mention it. of this person being trans in the movie. Yeah. It, it's just a, a, there's a nothing, Barbie. Yeah, there's no there's no storyline, there's no develop, there's no like, uh, she hated being a boy, mm. so now she's a woman. Mm. Like there's none of none that. Of it, at none of it, none of it. So And so it literally is just a case of the right wing being upset that a trans trans person is existing yeah. and is an actress. And the funny thing as well, it's like they're focusing so much on that. It's the fact that there's an entire movie and they're, they're so they're, they're so consumed also, with transness. Yeah. It's like they're making such an issue about this one thing when there's an entire movie with all this other stuff that's going on. And Literally, you're like, like, actually, when we watched it, I for some reason, I don't know, I thought it was going to be more trans than it was. And mm. I was like, actually, no, she's got like a couple of lines. She's a mainline Barbie in it. But like the storyline doesn't really revolve no, around her. No, she's a side character. She's, the, yeah. At all. Yeah. She's an absolute side character. It's not the point of the it's film. It's not the point of the film. Not the point. And not so, the point at all. But also all these like fragile men are saying about how it's like so woke and it's like, anti-man and it's like anti-masculinity and everything and it's barbie like it's literally be a barbie did film did they think it was gonna be about a barbie oh look at all the men in They've barbie got, like, it wasn't about male empowerment was it like it's it's so like it's really telling now it's like you're originally clutching you're at straws clutching now. at straws to be offended yeah but like your main thing your whole shtick ages ago was about how you know modernist society is like making men all weak all weak and pathetic Feminine. and so you've now got to the stage 
age where you're going to watch movies that is aimed at like women and young girls and then saying the that this the film is now demasculinizing men when it's not made for straight cis men like yeah well that's the thing isn't i don't it? They, like they can't possibly fathom a world in which some some piece of media is not made for them it's like so if weird. you if you want to watch anything about like hating women why don't you just go and watch game of thrones okay. for like 12 <laughs> years of your life just it, do it i just i i've never There's so much other media for you if you really want to watch like male empowerment i'll beat the woman there is every single piece of media ever ever let it's, someone else have barbie i just find it so bewildering that you you've got to a stage now where you're getting angry at a barbie film and saying it's not about men like it, it doesn't make any sense like you're that I, what do you want like what, what do you want you've literally become if it was about men they'd be like hated. I can't believe yeah, yeah. gay Barbie exactly. it's, it's just stupid. like oh what you do? like uh, you you get you're now literally being everything you protested back in 2016 and just mm. literally searching but, your th- utmost to be offended by anything the thing is is that um even going back to like the trans the trans thing just then it's they've always been like this they've just really wanted to they've they tried, just yeah. want to moan and have people listen forced to listen to yeah them. yeah These, the the kind of men that watch ben shapiro maybe not all of them but some of them i can imagine are like family men where they want to share the worst opinion possible at a dinner table but they're not letting their children leave because they're like yeah. you need to listen yeah. to me i'm right i'm the father what? and it's like actually the mum probably does everything in the yeah. family yeah the kids are going to school and looking after yeah. themselves yeah. and like trying to raise themselves and then eventually when they hit 18 they'll go into no contact with their father well, and he'll go uh, oh uh, nobody uh, likes uh, me why? why i'm not the brains the woke brigade it's, it's so like, just stupid stop being an absolute rotten they always and have people might like they you. always have slogans like now it's the woke people the woke agenda like they always have some kind of like imagine saying like oh it's really bad to be actually awake to social issues yes yeah, so you should be stupid. asleep because it's, it's so the american stupid. dream you it's... can only have it when you're asleep girl it's so dumb i think it's about i bet ben loved the film i don't oh, yeah half 100%. the stuff that he says i don't think he said like i bet he loved staring he at ken with his top off yeah exactly he was like oh i'm ken like, oh foot pics. am i manly enough for ken am i ken enough uh, like i it's am so I ken off? it's yeah. so Aww. it's so stupid I actually find it quite amusing now the fact that they've become these this level of yeah unhinged. because it's starting to it's starting to enter parody and satire yeah. era like anytime I see a right wing person literally going bah, 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 my brain automatically goes everything they're gonna say and you're gonna hear is wrong so is just wrong. don't even bother engaging. It- <laughs> yes, very that. It was the first time today, actually, I saw the rebrand of X. I clicked on a link to do with climate change and it was like, oh, X. It was funny was because like, it wasn't that long ago we did that. We, maybe it was the last result we spoke about because you mentioned, whatever happened to Elon X. Musk changing Twitter to X? X. And the yeah. weirdly it happened in that, you know, in that last few, like, well, a couple of days ago. Literally happened. a couple of days ago. <gasps> but what's weird is that I find that this, it was talked about, but then it wasn't like, counting down the day we shift over it's just like tomorrow X. no it was so sudden yeah so it was a bit like threads actually like why were they like oh by the way friday new social media so it's like give us some time <laughs> so talking about x and threads and twitter everything so people don't know twitter is you know the social um, everyone knows everyone knows what twitter um, is when Elon Musk bought it, there was rumours at the beginning that he was going to, like, change the name of it to uh, other things. And then it, went, but then it came out as that like, he was going to change it to X, like, a few months ago. But, like, it kind of just so, went away and disappeared. Interestingly, Elon Musk is one of these people that often buys into already successful brands and companies and has this thing about wanting to change them to X. Yeah, You've the got PayPal Space thing, X. wasn't it? PayPal, PayPal. PayPal, he was going to call X or XPay or something. And his child is called, like, Xzala Database. <laughs> like, it's so, like, what's it? It's almost like, you know, when I create a character, I'm like, well, of Warcraft, and yeah. I'm like, they need three X's in their name yeah. somewhere. Like, what is it with the X? X, 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 X Luxaria. <laughs> yeah, I have X's everywhere. It's just ridiculous. Oh, out of nowhere, last, like, it was like yesterday or the day before, like, there was this news report just suddenly being like, oh, by the way, uh, later this evening, Twitter is now going to be called X. And yeah. It was just like, what? What's happening? Why? So now Twitter is now called X. It's is now it called actually X-ing? called X-ing? No, it's not called X. Is it called X? Well, like, what is? Well, you can't say tweet anymore because it's is not it called, called Twitter. Zeet? Zeeting. I don't know. Why Zeeting. Called, but like xylophone. Like, it doesn't make any sense why you would change it. An already wait, wait. established huge brand. I said this in our group chat with uh, Novimpia that I said that I believe that he is changing the name from Twitter to X because he wants to feel like he's the creator of it. So he is. Well, this is everything he's done yeah, with every other like brand. Like he's distancing himself from the Twitter name because of how abysmal it's been since taking over. Yeah, he has so a lot. 
then money. he can't say that he destroyed Twitter because he's like, well, Twitter doesn't exist. Yeah. I don't have Twitter. I have I X. actually have X. I think there's I a want- slight manipulation tactic going on where he's trying to change people's mind. Like, he doesn't have Twitter. He has X. So he didn't destroy Twitter because he doesn't have Twitter. His little, like, followers will absolutely eat it up at every mm-hmm. step of the way. It doesn't make any just, sense. It doesn't make any sense. Twitter used to be quite a really well-respected way of getting instant news from across yep. the world yep. anywhere. It was quite a an integral part of, like, exposing, like media blackouts and yes. stuff when people were involved in like disagreements or like wars or anything like battles and things and now it's just become a cesspit like yeah. anytime I go on Twitter I just know that I'm going to see the worst takes from the most uneducated like ill-informed people ever yeah. but they're going to be presented by the algorithm as the authority well the, the thing topic. is as well now is a lot of these insane Elon Musk simps have the monetary incentive because the, oh, yeah, the, the ad, ad so basically I don't know exactly how it works but people who buy Twitter blue which is when you get the verification yeah. tick now are now getting like a revenue share of like the adverts that go on to yeah, Twitter yeah. and so a lot of these big accounts now who have ticks are just like tweeting the most They're unhinged trolling. things yeah. so then people would interact with them and retweet and quote tweet mm-hmm. everything so then they will get money so yeah. so many times now I've seen in the past couple of weeks I'm like if someone actually believes what you've just tweeted I'm worried for your existence absolutely like, absolutely. B- but it's all trolling people so people like Ollie London as well has just gone ham on his Twitter tweeting out every couple of like minutes just the most insane things just because again people, you get money yeah, and monetary incentive yeah. to spread d- misinformation um, and delusion Essentially, clickbait, really. Exactly. I don't think if I was a business person in this situation, I could have designed a faster way of producing a mass misinformation machine. Oh my god! If if I tried, like, if I had budget to try and make this, just somehow he's gone. Do you know what? Dead. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> She's it's dead. It's just so insane. It just shows that he has absolutely no idea what he's doing, and this is all an ego trip. It, it, it is. Uh, I almost feel like when Elon Musk bought Twitter, he was kind of buying an idea of like making himself famous and yes. like likable, like yes. a comedian kind of thing, instead of actually like trying to work on himself to become likable to people. He's kind of forced people to see him. Yes. In sort of like a weird, oldie, timey royalist that's like, G- let's go and wave at the peasants to remind them that I'm still yeah. here. Well, there was this thing that he was blurring out images now. People were showing, a load of people were tweeting images of him with the Ghislaine Maxwell. Oh. And apparently like the filter was like blurring the image and no one could see it. Interesting. Because he was hanging around with like- He was, yeah. He, was he on the flight list? Thing. Maybe I'm not sure. Interesting. Interesting. Did, you, did you also? I did, sorry to randomly bring up Ghislaine Maxwell. Did you know she's in prison for like? Yeah, she got forever now. Oh, I, well, yeah, I watched all, like a lot of the you trial want, stuff on I the internet. I didn't yeah. see any of this. I was so invested I didn't because see I was like a single shred of it. And I just literally was the other day. She was like complaining that someone was making noise in her cell. And so I like mm. read up on it, and then I was like, oh, yeah, she was I missed found guilty. all of this. Yeah, yeah, I was following when it was all happening because I was I don't so know how I missed it. Worried that she would get off because she was like the side woman who was like, oh, but I would, I. If she was a man, like, though, oh, she probably would have gone Oh, absolutely, off. yeah. So I was like, go on, is she actually going to get done? But yeah, she was, I, I remember watching all the trial stuff. Yeah, so wild. good. Ghislaine Maxwell, rot in hell. Rot in um, hell. The, the X thing, I just find it so strange. And I, I I would love to know how much money he's actually, one, invested into Twitter, but also lost from it. Because we have some numbers on the internet, but it's very difficult to know what the actual numbers are. Stuff but up. like money for billionaires doesn't work the same way as it does for us. Like they have things called like good and bad debt and I'm sure he can just like wipe it off and make so much money from this. Yeah. And I don't understand quite how it works because in Elon Musk's bank account, he doesn't actually have like, he probably has a couple of billion dollars, yeah. but he doesn't have whatever his estimated net worth is. Yes. Like that's all assets and like the concept of Elon Musk is worth that much. Yes. Which doesn't make, like it's difficult to wrap your head around like, the concept of being worth something, but actually worthless at the same time. And people are almost like cryptocurrencies. It, kind of it's just a little like... bit of an idea of like, it's only worth money or worth that value if you believe it is. Yes, Which yes, is yes. very like Beanie Baby vibes, mm-hmm. you know? Like, the 90s it's not Beanie Babies. worth a single penny, but because so many people are invested in it, it the idea is suddenly worth money. Well, it, it's like NFTs. It, it, and it's almost like gambling with Beanie Babies. So many people are buying them in the 90s thinking that they're going to be, they were worth so much. But again, they're, they're worthless now. They're not, really. they're not worth anything. And we're going to see that again with so many other different mm-hmm types of things in this world. And you just buy into things now just hoping that that's not what's going to happen to that one thing that you've decided to buy. I mean, there's only one thing, really. One sort of, like, branch of, like, investment that will never devalue. And that's... Sex. Precious metals. 
<laughs> just metals. Well, yeah. sex will always devalue. Yeah. <laughs> sex will always devalue because mm. cock is a replenishing, infinitely replenishable substance on Earth. <laughs> so it will always devalue. <laughs> no, because all the soy milks make it all the oh, men gay. All the frogs and all gonna gay. Die. Yes, maybe they should. <laughs> That's made my ear pop screaming. There, oh, all goodness me. Oh, Elon's here. Yeah, the X rebranding from Twitter is just bizarre. Will you I... keep your X account? So I've got it just because I want it for search as well because it helps my name in search. Because of course. As, I mean, as will it though now? Like, as soon as you rebrand something to nothing, I don't no, know. No, but if it's just it because, is. like, when you have a following and stuff, when you have, like, at least your name attached to it, I'm just hoping that, like, I mean, it's just yeah, like my name's SEO out stuff. there. Yeah, SEO yeah. stuff. Like, it's yeah, very boring to talk about, but, like, it, behind the scenes, uh, it's, it's admin business yeah. stuff. Yeah. I'm kind of annoyed that Threads released early because I feel like they've really f***ed themselves over. Yeah. Because they it wasn't ready, ready they? and they, they released threads on the on like the tailgate of Twitter being a bit rubbish at the time because yeah. they released it really soon after they had um Twitter going like, oh, you've reached your tweet limit for the day. Yeah. So a couple of weeks ago, Twitter had this strange thing where apparently Elon didn't pay his Google Drive bill or whatever. I don't, I don't exactly know. I what think the... that's probably what it is. If it's yeah. a massive business losing money, probably someone, someone was like, you're not paying so yeah. curbed. So, but because the site happened behind the scenes and essentially Elon made it where you could only view like I can't remember, I can't remember the numbers but it was like you could only view like, like six th- if you weren't verified it was like 300 tweets a day yeah or was it 600 Might it was like 600. three or six or so I can't remember. and then if you were verified you could see like a thousand and of course that caused a huge backlash against him and with that being said threads then suddenly released early threads like a few days later and mm-hmm. it was like it's a really like unfinished app it is and... unfinished i love what i'm experiencing so far i think the picture quality is great i think the the level of interaction i'm actually getting on there is is quite cute yes. considering i don't have a huge following on there yeah yet. it is unfinished it's like a beta app mm-hmm. like it's still learning like the algorithm is a bit weird i keep being shown people that i just would like like apparently i'm following them from instagram but it's like the content doesn't match no, what no, I no. would want to see yeah. anyway. I don't know, like Instagram's really good at feeding me like dog videos, Dogs. makeup, fashion, all the things that I actually quite like. But on threads, it's like, none of this. None of Here's it, a yeah. comedian from 10 years ago. Yeah. It's like, that's a bit like so, odd. And like, there's no like hashtag search feature or like search feature at all. And there's no like yeah. trending topics. Like if you're gonna, if you're gonna compete with Twitter, be better, yes. don't be worse. Yes. And so I'm just hoping that threads get their shit together because I actually quite like it. And I'm, I'm just hoping that like within the next couple of weeks or even a month, like just... It needs to go needs through to, a growing phase, yeah. I think. Because nowadays people's attention spans are like eight seconds. It can't die because yes, of yes, that. Yes, Do you know what yes. I mean? Like, because people will be like, well, that was shit. It's no, not immediately it's perfect. No. Why isn't it working? Like, it needs to be like a little bit of nurturing yeah. and then it could work. Oh my gosh. Okay, so... Oh, we haven't of- even talked about Elon Musk versus Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, but did that have a dick measuring competition? Well, yeah, no, but they're also going to do a UFC fight, aren't they? Yeah, but I I think we did, I think we mentioned that in the last one, but like, we're like, we're not sure if it's going to happen. I'm not sure if it's going to happen, but they keep releasing photos of like preparing, so who knows? Ridiculous. I think it's stupid for Mark to do that. Although, Mark Zuckerberg, like, have you seen his photos that he actually looks jacked? Like, so. Elon looks a bit like Ill. a rodent. A, 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 he's elongated muscle. He looks like an inbred capybara. Oh. Um, oh my gosh! Can we just quickly talk about the AI streaming nonsense that's been going on oh, on TikTok? Oh, NPCs. Yes, it's this was so in my list, but weird. I forgot. Yeah. It's so so. If you haven't seen this, oh, there I'm is. I'm going to have some interesting takes on there's this. this <laughs> new, there's this new trend on TikTok where. Um, oh, see, it's not actually new. It's just that we're seeing it seeing in Western new, yes. society um, for the first time. There's this. There is. This, so there was a girl called Pinky Doll who kind of been like has become like the face of it. Yes, She's she one that's become, become like famous. And essentially, what happens is on TikTok when you do live streams, um, a little bit like Twitch, you can send in like alerts where basically like you spend so on on. Uh, it's like um, YouTube stickers super chat. Yeah, so like you buy these little coins on Twitch, uh, on TikTok, sorry, and they're worth monetary value. So like I think it's like a hundred coins for like f- a dollar or something. Yeah, I don't know exactly like what it is. And then like on the chat menus in like the lives, you can send these gifts or like you can treats do it on or Instagram whatever. Instagram as well. Did you do you know Instagram that? as well? Yeah. I didn't know that. And when people send in these like bits they have a reaction to it yeah and so a streamer called Pinky Doll who has like such many so many viewers that yes. she's like reacting every time to these bits and things that come on and so everyone has a different reaction to the stage where it looks like they're like a robot yeah, or like there's some like kind of ice cream yum yum ice cream yum gang, gang. oh yes yes yes, yes. I'm like ice cream yum yum balloon pop 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 oh, yeah I can smell the roses and that like, goes on for hours, hours and, and hours and hours and they must be exhausted after they oh I can't streams. even imagine but they make 
Bank. They make so much money. And it's Bank. been so fascinating to watch this new kind of like big now suddenly f- popular it's a trend i trend. guess isn't it the reaction to some people like have they've they've linked it to pedophilia they've yeah. linked it to uh like trafficking yeah they've linked and yeah. i i mean maybe there are some shifty people along some of this There's stuff shifty people on everything though i it, watch it and i go although i find it utterly deranged if you've never it's seen not it not for me <laughs> if you've never seen it after this podcast go and look up the ai tiktok it's it's so mind boggling. TikToking, uh, like it's... I watched Pinky Doll do it for yeah. about half an hour because I was just researching and looking at things. Yeah. And I was f- transfixed because I was like just waiting for a second break character, waiting for the break character. She, when is it going to happen? Have you seen when her like child is off screen and she's yeah. like, get back to bed? <laughs> did, did, there was one where um, the child had like smeared shit on the walls <gasps> and she started speaking in French and someone was saying what she, what was, she saying. was saying. Um, apparently wow. one of her kid had like smeared like his own feces on like the wall. It was really insane. Oh, like dear. I was watching it and I was like, it's really impressive that they can stay on Chuck, especially because the speed that it's going at. And like, I'm all for like, if you can make your money the way you're doing, if you're yes. not, if you're not I hurting actually think anyone, it's a harmless way of. If of you are streaming. not hurting anyone and you're happy to do it, and it's not something you're being forced in, make your money, girl. And like, people enjoy it. I put it in the same category in my head as like ASMR streamers. ASMR, it's yeah. It's very like there does seem to be an element of like it could be innocence, but it also seems a little bit incelly in terms of like oh I'm falling in love with this streamer and I mm-hmm. get to press this button and she does what I want. Yeah, like it's a bit uh, like vending machine. Yeah, but for human affection mm-hmm. or attention. So I do get an idea that it is, has like a dark undertone, but like what streaming doesn't? Mm-hmm. Like anytime you're interacting with a human being and money is involved, there can always very quickly be one step behind a dark undercurrent. I, the only problem with this kind of stuff seen is- Trisha's. I saw <laughs> Trisha Paytas trying to do it. Um, so I watched, there was this one girl and I think she was one of the original ones because yeah. before Pinky Doll yeah. and she was- I think she was like Korean or Japanese. Yes, so it I actually think... started there. It was yeah. very similar to like the mukbang trend that yes. we see constantly. It starts in Asia, yeah. wherever it might be, and it gets super popular there on their own like social media yes. pages and stuff like that. And then it somehow like someone sees it and goes, we'll do that in the Western world. So yeah. it's like a very keen trend moving across. Yes. So I, although I think for like people like Pinky Doll and other ones doing it because now there's so many people doing it because they've seen the trend. Yes. It's like, although I saw Pinky Doll getting quite excited because she was making a lot more money and stuff. And it's like, actually, this isn't a good thing because this always tends to be like the beginning of the end. Yes. Because now all of a sudden it suddenly becomes incredibly it's ri- oversaturated. Yes, it's riding the wave. And now it's going to become like more of a business thing where quality companies are going to get on this and be like, we're going to hire people to do this for us. Yes, exactly like, that. So although this seems exciting at the time for like people who were like the original people who were doing this isn't actually a good thing in the end because it, yeah but the market becomes so oversaturated the same with most things i am lucky that my niche that i join the internet when i come reacting to like piercing tattoos it's still quite a small niche so you need some form of like education or something in the well, so field actually i've got something i've got a perfect way to describe that when you think about creating content you have to know your niche mm-hmm. and when you it, it, you always have to do more than one mm-hmm. more than one niche in order to really make it successful in a very specific niche you have to be in the like the top five percent of that niche so yeah you mean you have to be exceptionally good at that yeah as soon as you add in a secondary branch to that you do not have to be in the top five percent yeah you can be in the top 30 yeah. percent and people will find you fascinating interesting you could even like add in a third thing and then people are like oh my god you're the top 90 yes. percent now like it's just fascinating for me it's science and beauty yes. and plastic surgery yeah no one is doing those three things i yeah. haven't heard a person with a biochemistry degree who's got 16 years of makeup experience talking about plastic surgery and old reality tv shows i'm the only one that does it i'm doing for it. you yes i'm exactly. saying i'm yeah. actually gonna take for you account. it's piercing reactions and body modification but from a point of an enthusiasm rather than like a professional in the industry. Yeah. So it's like it's And it's, you film in 8K. And if a movie film in 8K. <laughs> but like so I think sometimes like niches can stay even if it gets big in a way like you can still have the people but when it comes to NPC things I think a little bit of like get, just getting used to doing it and like anyone can kind of do it mm. even if it's a bit cringe I saw this one guy who was like dressed up as like a like almost like a Ken doll but like an army man and he was like daddy can I sit down oh d-. and he was like shaking his like bum like making it bounce and it was like this is when you know things are getting like <laughs> people I was like this, it was literally this, this guy pretending to be an army man and he was like with a gun and being like oh can I and everything was like sexual when he was reacting to everything 
everything was like, oh, big weapons get big prizes. Oh, can I sit down, daddy? And it was like, this is when you know. When Trisha Paytas, for example, was being like, oh, oh, like that's when you know we, this like beginning of the end yeah. of your trend. We've gone full circle. We've gone from like babe station, like call in and talk to me all the way around to like TikTok being like, press this button and I'll do that. Press this Isn't button and I'll come. Weird. Isn't it weird how like everything seems like technology works in circles. Mm -hmm. Trends work. Trends are circles. It's so strange. There's something about TikTok like fame and notoriety that just doesn't seem to translate to anything else. Like you see YouTubers quite often going off and doing like their own things with brands, like releasing films, things like that. Do you think like the next NPC TikTokers bringing out a Pussy. phone? <laughs> like <laughs> what are they doing? Do you know what I mean? Like where's 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 the career development? Or yeah, is it I don't just know. like, oops, you found this niche, good luck. This isn't like a, this is like, I'm going to make my money now and go. Yeah. Like you, I don't know how one you hit can, wonder. I don't understand how you can translate that into... Anything. It's not like you're there because people are following you because you're funny or personality. You're being followed because of this one very specific thing that doesn't That's really... That's kind of lucky. Yeah, that doesn't really translate into other... Areas. Areas. Like what, like, like what, sk I mean, I guess maybe like, maybe like presenting and broadcasting, but like what serious presenter or broadcaster is going to be like, oh my God, we need a new person. Person. Yeah. Let's go on to TikTok and pick that NPC lady. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Because again, that stuff will get tiresome very, very quickly. Mm. And once the slight hype of it's gone, it's like, well, dead. Daddy, can I sit down? Like, it's, it's so stupid. Oh, but I mean, honestly, me make uh, your money, make your money, make your, your money coin, and leave. Make your Think pussy. about what you've done. Think about what you've done and kill someone. Okay, so. Have you heard what's happening currently in Europe? Which is funny because we're not getting any of all that. It was weird, isn't it? It's like the heat wave. The heat wave. Yeah, so so missed I us. think there was, was it a storm called Karen? Sharon? Karen makes Karen. sense. <laughs> yeah, Storm Karen. It was like C-H-A-R-O-N. And Oh, she thinks she's special. I know, she's like, no, nah, I'm not Karen with a K, say. I'm Ironically, C I've just been playing Final Fantasy 16 and there's a Karen that spells it that way in there. Oh, so really? It's like, oh, what's happening here, girls? No, so um, there's been huge heat waves happening in Europe. Yeah. And a lot of it is related to the very fact that the last sort of like 10 days on record have been the hottest ever seen on this planet ever. I sent a graph this morning into our little group chat and I was like, Oh, like doom! We're we're actually all gonna die. Yeah, like, this is it. so. The point, the conversation has been for the last like goodness no, fifteen years, being like it's gonna happen. We need to pay attention. Watch out, girls. Twenty fifties on its way. Girls, this is the first year in which we've actually seen like almost a blue ocean event. There's mm -hmm. something like seven hundred and seventy thousand square miles of ice just hasn't come back. And we're like, oh, oh dear, oh dear. We predicted, we predicted 2050, and it's actually happened this year, and we're not even through summer yet. No. Nope. So interestingly enough, in Europe, they're having um, some pretty extreme heat waves. And There's actually, been isn't the wildfires in Greece? Yes, yeah. in Rhodes, which is ironically a place that we were going to go and visit, oh, literally like around this time. So I'm glad that that's not happening. But yes, I so, saw on um, sorry, just a side yes. I saw I just I saw this video, some insufferable white woman on Twitter being like. I can't believe my holiday's been cancelled. I really just want to, I paid for it. And like, people are literally dying. Like, people are losing their homes. Yeah, people are getting so Like, shut up. Like, yeah. shut I get that it's annoying, but just have some awareness. Like, has, yeah. going on the news and being like, my holiday's been cancelled. I'm so upset. Shut up. Like, read the room, sis. Like, actually be quiet. Yeah, literally that. There were, like, it's, uh, this is what I don't understand about, like, the whole Just Stop Oil and everyone being so irate that, like, when people say, like, you're not protesting the way I want you to protest. It's like, there will be no capacity for protest I when do... we are all dead. I wanted to mention about just, so Just Stop Oil is, like, at, if people, do, is it around the world or is it just the UK? I don't know, but it's sort of an off branch of Extinction Rebellion, which yeah. is just very, the latest sort of, like, anti-climate change or climate change awareness. Yeah. So essentially there's these people who are protesting around London um, that we, I, I might, I'm not sure if it's other places as well, but basically yeah. they're going on the roads and like stopping traffic from moving and stuff. I always wondered, like I'm, I, I'm kind of a bit flippant about this kind of style of protesting where like, I don't really know how I feel about it because I understand that it can be annoying or whatever, but I'm also like, well, but there's the no planet of, without, like, we're gonna yeah, die. <laughs> like, the point of protest is to feel annoyed. It's to yeah. make you feel something. So yeah. I know that, like, I do, what I do, I don't agree with stopping emergency services. That's oh, one absolutely, of the only, yeah. When they stand in the road and they're like, this person needs to get to hospital for X, Y, Z reason, I am like, okay, move out of the way. And I do understand that, like, there are some countries in the world that don't, that the way that they protest or the way that they strike 
revolves more around the money than the people like they, yeah so um there was bus drivers in japan i think that were like we're still going to operate and run our services we're just not taking money for the company yeah which is a really effective way of quickly enacting change but in this country you can't do that because yeah. you'll just be arrested at work I find or fired it, or something i find it because i was wondering like the way that they're protesting does it work well this is the thing, isn't it? Is there any type of protest that really works unless there's violence involved? Especially because we have a Tory government. And like when they... The Tories was, will quite happily sell you down the river to watch you die. Yeah, because... Then be like, oh my God, you I sprayed our building orange. Remembers Let's stop. when Insulate Britain was happening in the Oh yeah, the they winter. didn't care. So Insulate Britain was like... Uh, Basically, there were, there were these people saying that well, we need to get more insulation for like homes in the UK because it was so cold because the energy crisis that was happening because people yeah. couldn't afford to heat their I homes. I think also, and- can we just say this about climate change? I think this is what people don't understand is although the world is getting warmer, that's the average temperature. Averages are calculated from the central point of two individual points. That doesn't mean that we're going this way. It means we're going this way. Yes, yes, yes. So winters are going to get more brutal and summers are going to get more brutal. Yes. So it's like, that's the reason why we say average global temperature is moving is because generally the summer are getting so hotter but also the winters are getting freezing and yeah. really elongated and longer and problematic for people which is why things like insulate britain are like can we look after our old people who are dying in their homes from not being able to heat yeah. it in the winter and so the reason i say like does this protesting kind of work is because when all that was happening all the tories did was we're making this illegal yeah and so well you know something is like working when people are like illegal they don't want to actually deal with the problem they want to create a co- they want to create a symptom that they can then deal with yeah because that's what I was because when I saw this news the just to people were doing it and I was like I was like does it I was just a bit confused I was like does this form of protesting work because they've been they've been doing this now for a few years and I was like is this working well the thing is is that like I, this is going to sound in- incredibly like I don't know anti-establishment but the only real time that protesting ever really works for like a cause that's so important is when violence is introduced mm-hmm. or violence happens or there's some form of death or something like the one that I can immediately think of is when the suffragettes wanted the right to vote for women I can't remember her name but she stepped outside she stepped in front of the king's horse and the king's horse killed her she died but it created such a like massive moment of like yeah. this has happened this needs to change yeah and it's very like when you hear government officials being like no you can't protest like that that's naughty. We want you to go over there, protest over there, where you're not causing a problem. Mm-hmm. No one can hear you, and we can just ignore well, you. Well, it makes it, that they makes want it... to ignore protesting when actually what we should be doing is protesting in their faces. That's like when really the... aggressively, so they cannot avoid it. The king's it's... coronation, yeah. and they put those massive bollards up in yeah, front being of like, their. No. So they made all the people who are protesting the coronation. They, they also made it illegal just before that, didn't did they? they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they put the they put loads of like wooden boards like in front of them to so block the entirety of yeah. like what they were doing, so like the king How could never is that? see it. How insulated is that? It's like, oh, your peasants actually hate you, yeah. but we're gonna put big boxes around them so you can't see them because your ego did you watch the uh, there was videos going around of people was not long um there were people uh when the king went up to scotland because they have to have a coronation in scotland too and they were going to visit whatever and the crowd were booing them i do remember this i don't think it was anything really happened from it no, no it kind of but i don't remember that but to be honest what did they think was going to happen what like, do you think was gonna happen? i knew yeah. like i know there was like conversation being like will this be the last royal ever no because it's up to them yeah <laughs> like <laughs> you imagine being like oh my god the most arrogant narcissistic sheltered person has to decide of their own free will to not be in power anymore yeah. it's not gonna happen and he's waited for it's, too long yeah, for him it's to never gonna get, happen yeah. never 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 gonna happen um, i think this is why now we're starting to see marketing shift around the royal family to be like oh aren't the little princes lovely oh yeah oh, sweetheart yeah. look at them getting it ready for school in yeah. their little outfits as opposed to being like look at the solid diamond throne that they're sitting on oh, whilst, it's telling, yeah. whilst telling everyone else oh you've got to pinch those pennies because yeah. there's just not enough money because like they said the coronation cost a hundred million pounds a hundred million pounds. Yeah, we're having cost of living crisis. Well, people literally can't even feed their families because mm-hmm. their energy bills are so high. Yeah. And this is what I mean. The same as Rishi Sunak. I remember I watched an a interview of Rishi Sunak really I, recently. I cannot bear the oh, Tory party. It, it, ridiculous. But Rishi Sunak was, I can't, I can't remember exactly what the topic was he was talking about, but he was basically saying like, oh, we just need to, we just don't have the funds to do this thing. And it was to help, it was to help workers. It was like yeah. normal work. I can't remember it's exactly what. It's always to help. It's always There's to, never yeah. enough money to help. There's always enough money to fight. Um, And he was like, we just need 
to find the money. We're like, we just don't know where the money has come from. You're a billionaire. You're li- like, you could, you could fund li- this multiple brilliant. times over. He is the richest and not prime minister we've ever happened. had. Being on the outside of things like this and being able to really crystal clear see it for what it is with no rose tinted glasses, it is literally the ruling elite thinking you are stupid. Yeah. Because they are like, look at us in our really wealthy way of living, telling you there's no money. There's no money. And because yeah. these people have lived probably hand to mouth for like the last. Well, since they've gotten in power, like 14 years. It's weird to even hear MPs stand up in, in Parliament and be like, well, the Labour government. It's like they haven't had power for 15 yeah, years. Like, it's yeah. all you. Whatever is happening in the world now, all you. It's all you. All on it's all you. you. Wake up, you stupid bitch. Yeah. These families and the people that vote for them, maybe they don't have enough money. But then, so they listen when people and other people are like, well, we also don't have any money. We're in this together. Please ignore the fact I'm in a solid gold castle. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's just... I, it, it literally boils my piss because I am like, Britain is such a nation, like the average Brexit geezer Britain man is such a complainer. They'll be like, everything is getting worse and worse and worse, but they'll just sit and complain and then not do anything about it. I'm not very much because I just don't like it's him. It's so annoying. I do feel like this is sometimes when like Europe gets this right. And it's very, like we, we often see like riots happening in France when, when a government official tries to like bring in a policy that people don't like, they go to uniform rioting. Yeah. And it's like, I feel like we need to do this. Like, I'm so sick of them being like, well, you know, the energy crisis, mm, there's nothing for you, but they do get a big bonus oh, from the yeah. government. Oh, mm-hmm. shake that pussy for money. Like, at what point are the British public going to be like, this is enough? This is enough, This yeah. is enough. This is actually enough. The amount of like individual stories I hear of people being like, well, I have to move back in with my parents. I'm 42, I've got two children, and I have to move back in with my boomer parents because I cannot afford to live. Yeah. It's like... Well, 40... the boomers are like, yeah, yeah. British, uh, uh, it conservatives. Just, it's, it's like, at what point do we say, that's enough of all that. This mm-hmm. is all made up. We can stop yeah. doing all that Well, there, there's a stupid... There was a, a photo that Rishi Sunak tweeted the other day of like, him going to watch the Barbie movie with his kids and his wife, and it was like, stop pretending like you're like you probably bought out the whole cinema. Yes. Yeah, you probably paid out so no one was in there while you're watching it. Like, let's not pretend that you go to the cinema with your attention. family. Yeah. But he also was caught in a like, uh, women don't have dicks lol recently. Stupid. It's well, like, and someone said, well, maybe some do. And it's like, ah, oh, you don't know what a woman is. It's like, but there was that ho- there was a whole begin? there was a whole video of him from like what was that yeah. being like oh um I have friends from all over the spectrum high high class middle class like, well maybe not middle class but like do you remember it was just like shoot. well it's like when he was feeding the homeless and he asked a homeless man what branch of business he works in. It's like, you, you can't write this. Like, you this, can't, this no. isn't a comedy sketch anymore. He's, this he's is beyond satire. He's 100% the most out of touch prime minister we've ever had. But also, the third one we've not voted for. Mm-hmm. Third in a one row. In a row. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I don't know what's going to happen at the next day. It's next year, isn't it? Next the year, yeah. I just don't know what's going to happen because I don't like Labour either at the moment. I don't like Keir Starmer. Well, I don't he's like become their... more conservative, but I it's, see it as he's a lesser of two evils. And diet conservative yeah. at the moment. And it's just kind of like, I don't really. Like, we need a huge shake-up in this country of, like, where we're... The direction that we're going in. But it's like the silent majority or whatever loves where it's going mm. because they're not complaining about yeah. it. So it's like, do you know what? Here for the ride. Can't really do a lot about it. It's, but we can't leave this island because no, of Brexit. It's embarrassing. I'm it really embarrassing. I'm really embarrassed about our country. Whenever I go to another country, I am almost glad that I don't really look typically British because I'm like, don't talk to me about Britain. Don't talk to me about mm-hmm. Brexit. Don't talk to me... Like, don't talk to me! Don't talk to it's me! It's like, I, I actually feel embarrassed for the state of political affairs mm-hmm. in this country when I visit anywhere else and I'm like, I just can't bear it. It's yeah. cringe. It's yeah. like, it's so weird to describe a political movement as cringe, but this country is cringe. It will cr- on the fully, nation, fully. on the like international stage. Every time we hear one of our politicians say something, I'm like, that's cringe. Cringe. Cringe, and you're not taking it seriously. Yep. I don't know, Little Britain, isn't it? It's very Little Britain in terms of like, we Little Britannia ruled the world. And they've still got all this attitude and it's like, your people are dying. Literally dying. Your people yeah. are dying, starving in their own homes because they can't heat them, but you're busy going, best country in the world! This is what I don't understand, is this. I find it very strange that these people who are in power, like, can't... Because I, I thought this about Rishi Sunak. I was like, yeah. how are you not smart enough to know, although this is manipulation, I'm fully aware this is, like, I'm, I'm trying to think of, like, a smart version of him would think this. It's like, the country so far is going through a very economically damaging time yes and so multiple different reasons multiple different reasons being someone who is a billionaire you could do this for your advantage and go i am going to take some of my own wealth and help the country that i care for for. that i care for and for all the people who are doubting you there'll be so many people being like (gasps) 
he's a wonderful. He dipped yeah. into his own pocket to save the country. He yeah. helped all these people to get... But he won't. I understand why he won't, because mm. he's selfish. Mm. To me, I'm like, how are you that dumb to think you wouldn't... I want to stay well, in power. Yeah. So if I do this... It will help people vote for me. I like, know, I, because I know, when I know. you're like, in, when you when you're a billionaire, you can get rid of so much of your money, or like sell still, stock, or do something, and like be a billionaire. and still be a billionaire. So like, I don't understand how like logically you're not going. Oh well, I could spin this to my own advantage. But now I'm gonna sit there and be like. We can't find it's, any money. Well, you know why it is. It's because there's no such thing as a good billionaire. Mm. <laughs> it's because it's the same thing what we said earlier. It takes a very specific kind of person to yeah. be a billionaire. Yeah. And they are, they aren't human. No, really. yeah, They yeah. don't have empathy. They yeah. don't have that giving out. Just chlamydia. Because they need to take and that's yeah. how they get to where they are. Yeah. It's sad and it's very interesting. And I said this in the last podcast, literally months ago. It's like, I don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of years, but so much seems to happen in between these two episodes that we do. Yeah. Or these few episodes. Every, like, Every now and then we do a current events one and then we do like a follow up one and I'm like, so many things have changed since the last two months ago. Wow. Well, yes, absolutely. Everything's gotten worse. Everything's gotten worse, like, more I dead. I just don't know, like, at this, like, what's going to happen on the 25th of June, 2024? Yeah. Of June? Of July, 2024. What are we going to make our podcast about there? We're going to be like, oh, well, the planet did die. Yeah. But we're still here in we're space. Here. Yeah, we're actually, we're actually we're the only two that managed to survive. We're oh, making the podcast God, for hopefully that someone in the, 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 the ether. The, the ether is. <laughs> Someone throughout time will hear gag of the millennium. And this will be the last recorded human message. Can you imagine? To describe what Aliens find us like. and they're like, oh, these people. Oh, Humanity, no, probably yeah. they should have died. We can yeah. always tell. Yeah, we can. <laughs> Uh -huh. Oh, but so do well, they can't. No, that's, that's, that's the, the irony. They, they can't. can't. They Stupid. can't. Oh my god! It's so. I, it's, again, so many more stories recently have come out of like cis women being attacked. Oh yeah. From yeah, yeah, yeah. These well, that that woman recently on Twitter that was like. Stop! Like, just I bleed, so I'm a woman. Oh, and it was, so sh she was upset with some man who like thought that she was trans, and she literally went on then a rant against trans people. It's like, well. Transphobia hurts everyone. It hurts That's everyone. That's the point. Again, if you it's have such rigid... femininity and masculinity, yeah, it has nothing to do with man and rigid, woman. Yeah, rigid ideas about what those two things are, then any amount of deviation from them immediately, especially in this current climate right now, puts you at risk. Well, that's which means it hurts everyone. The funny thing about the whole situation is, is they are so adamant that like gender and the way that you know people present themselves is not a social construct, while then or attacking the it. most like they'll attack women for not looking feminine enough and it's yeah. like but th if they're a, they're a it's cis so woman they're a cis woman they're born like this yeah and you're saying they're not feminine enough and you're calling them a man but it's like you've just said that gender isn't a social construct yeah but if this person looks and acts and behaves like this and they're a cis woman yeah what like, yeah what's the problem what's, <laughs> like what I what you are you angry about what are you angry about there's like a recent sort of spin in the GC world, gender, what is it called? Gender critical nonsense. Gender critical, yeah. That's like, oh, why can't you just be feminine, a feminine man? It's like, whenever in history, ever in history, well, more than recent history, should we say, has it ever been more beneficial to be a feminine man, mm -hmm. ever? So what you're actually saying is- Don't exist. Don't exist. Don't you're exist. actually trying to erase an entire swathe of the population. Do we, we didn't talk about the- Q Edwards thing happening. Oh. oh my God. So like the Sun newspaper, the, the, I, the scum. I cannot believe that the Sun newspaper is like actually still a thing. Yeah, my dad used to read it. I, constantly. it's, it's, I, Lois, do you know what's, hila so what's hilarious? What's it's hilarious. chat magazine for men. What is so, I think I, I think I always use the word ironic wrongly, but I think this is irony. Yeah. I find it so funny that the Sun has the audacity to make an article about Hugh Edwards and say that, like, oh, he was that, like, like talk to young children, getting these young people to be, like sexualizing young people, getting trying to get photos, when they've literally made such a huge brand of like- Young women's having tits Having young out. women getting their tits out on page three. Yeah. There, was, there was one girl who was like 16, yeah. si 16 years old 16. with her tits out on page three. Yeah. Yet you have the audacity to say that Hugh Edwards is doing all this well, stuff. Well, have you like, seen what? the editor in chief of uh, The Sun was also, he wrote an article about wanting to sleep with children. Oh, it's 
hell. It's disgusting. It was like quite in depth and quite grim. And it was all about like the attraction, should attractive children, like something or other to do with attractive children. I was like, why are you, why, why are you, why are you why writing? Those words? Why have you written this down? Why is it printed? Why are you in a position of power still? So ridiculous. It's like anytime Piers Morgan opens his mouth about like some moral thing. And I'm like, you were involved in the Millie Dowler. You were literally, you, uh, yeah. you contributed to a kidnapped dead child's demise. Yeah. yeah. Why, why is anyone listening why? to you? Why? It's why, 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 Delilah? I think it's, Scum. it's The weird. British media is a very specific, like British mainstream media, should I say, is a very specific brand of demon. And it's like, I just rotten all the way through. I remember I saw an article the Murdoch, about a year, a year or so murders. ago. Apparently British... Uh, tabloid media and just media in general is the least reliable in the entirety of Europe. It doesn't surprise yeah. me. Absolutely doesn't surprise me. It's because here it's like an entertainment business mm -hmm. rather than like a news. Like I've never watched, I've never read like uh, a mainstream ma a mainstream like newspaper or anything and thought this is a really respectable thing. Maybe the only one is like the Financial Times. Yeah. Whereas all of everything else is like sensationalism, selling papers. Mm -hmm. And then they have the audacity when if you manage to click through to an article, they're like, we're very struggling. If you could just give us 30p to access yeah. the full mm -hmm. article. It's like you are a multi-billion dollar corporation. Yeah. Do you know the amount of times I've been approached by like, well, the Daily Mail was one of them and be like, we can't pay you for your story. Stupid. It's like, well, let me just have a look on Company's House and see what your last uh, f tax filing was for and how much money you made. Oh! Billions and billions. Yeah. What yeah. a surprise. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But yeah, I feel but like the, in the UK also, there's no such thing as left wing media. I don't think we fully know the whole story when it comes to Hugh Edwards, but we had a scandal where like there was apparently someone in the BBC like asking people for nudes. Yes. And it was like he paid 36 grand for a nude or something. And the way that they, the, the Sun newspaper wrote about it, it was like they were basically saying it was, it was like pedophilic. Yeah. And it was all groomy. And because of the whole Philip Schofield thing that has just happened, literally in the media, every gay celebrity who had an affiliation with media was suddenly scrutinized. Suddenly scrutinized. And have their name dragged through um, the mud publicly. And there was one I can't. I'm not going to quote who it is because I can't remember the exact. But there was one article. It wasn't it? Wasn't the Sun? They had put, used a photo of like Ryland. Yes, because so, I, I saw his tweet being like, "Excuse me, can, can you, you get rid of that? Down? That's I, irrelevant." I don't, I don't remember. I'm not going to say what what company because I can't remember. What it is, but like, they used a photo of Ryland, which is a, who was the TV presenter here, a gay man, saying like, "Oh, shocked media talking about grooming underage grooming," and it had yeah. a photo of him. So then the comment section on Facebook with this with was just like Ryland, like the pedo, acting like Ryland was a pedophile, and then the police had investigation and they said that there was no illegal activity actually being done yeah um and so there was so much speculation who it was when but it that, actually the came irony out. actually of course even in the article it in fact said oh the stepfather didn't like this relationship so he went to the police and the police said because they're both of age there is no problem here yeah so it actually started with homophobia mm -hmm. and then it was printed as like pedo this and it's like oh for God's sake, like there's no journalist integrity in no, this no, country no, 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 in no. the mainstream media. Yeah. But like, yeah, the Twitter were going wild with allegations yeah. of just yeah. like everyone because they wouldn't release who the person yeah, was. I feel like that is so like they knew they were gonna cause a fire. Yeah. They it's like starting a fire and then being like, nobody look at the fire. Because the thing it's is, very is warm what, what in I here, find, no one look. What I find in interesting is the fact that like the name of the person was gonna get released anyway in the end. So why did they wait? Maybe there's some kind of like privacy. That I bet we probably do have a weird little privacy law about like not being able to talk about possibly public figures. Because we did have that thing that was like, you have to stay six feet away from celebrities. You can't take upskirt shots anymore. Mm. That maybe there was some weird thing of being like, you have to wait a certain amount of time before the information is released for an investigation to happen yeah. or something. I just feel like with modern society, like that law doesn't actually necessarily help too much because it just made speculation well, run it, wild. Well, it's one of those things again where like it, the actual lawmakers are so old and out of touch that anytime something new happens in technology, they take ages to catch up with it. And yeah. by that point, the damage is already wrought yeah. because they're not listening to the experts in their field. They're like, well, when I was 12 in 1952, yeah. we just saw an apple. It wasn't a company. <laughs> And it's like, well, that's really unhelpful because now people's data are being stolen. And yeah. Oh, trafficked. Well, what are I mean, going to do about even that? Even a few years ago, like I don't, Mark, I don't like Mark Zuckerberg, but there was that. I remember that was that video of him in court when the the women, the the the, 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 uh, the Congress, Congress, Congress people or whoever, were like yeah. asking him loads of questions really about like Facebook, basic and it question. was like really dumb questions. Yeah. Like, is it? I can't control my head exactly what it was. But I remember no. watching this going like, oh, they are out of 
touch. You're talking as if it's like 1995. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. I don't understand how you think about this. Facebook is a, a multi billion corporation conglomerate at this mm. point. And you're talking as if it's like, if I press this one button, does that mean you can see what I'm doing? No, they don't have trackers in your PC. Yeah. Like, stupid. What are you. That, what, what? 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 But it's it's very much the political class is so out of touch. But again, it's because I don't know what it is about politics. It always seems to. It's it's very much like a re, not a revolving door policy. That's the wrong one. It's like a one in one out. Yeah. It's like oh, someone got in at eighteen and they're going to be in there until they're seventy. Yeah. And then at seventy, they're deciding what all the other eighteen are eighteen year olds are allowed to be doing with their life. And it's yeah. like that's just such a. There should be um, upper limits on how long people can be in politics for. Well, yeah. You that like there is no. Way. You can be, hell, like, why be can't half. you be in there for 10 years and we just say that's it you've had your 10 years in poli- yeah. your political and we need position to, whatever it is yeah. we need someone newer fresher whose mind has matured in a more modern age to understand how the world actually is now yeah well, I, I, mean, think I guess a- it's easy for me to say out on an outsider point of view because I'm not a politician yeah. I would love to be I'd love the fucking paycheck thanks forever I would it never be want the to be the only politician. one you couldn't pay me enough to be a politician no what a wor- worst thing imaginable I, I could I could quite happily run as a, a councillor of some sort I, I think. could not imagine like the stress you're on like to do that like just to have oh that. i couldn't be like a mainline prime minister person but i could be one of those people in the shadow cabinet that signs things mm. like what do they do nothing just make drink- loads of money drink in the free bar <laughs> yeah. have parties in the library yeah. all the coke you I could want, want. A party. yeah <laughs> oh, what's the party i want to go to a party boris you're at a party boris you're at a party you're also breaking covid laws. oh but he th- apparently they've got all the whatsapp messages from him now oh good oh yeah because he was like i forgot I the password because oh. he still lives in 1995 where that's yeah. apparently a thing stupid <laughs> i forgot, the, like, forgot my sorry, password there is enough police no stuff crime. now that you can get stuff in Ridiculous. i forgot my password no crime has imagine been i just find that weird that that can be an excuse like oh i can't give you all the information that might actually incriminate me because i forgot, I forgot my the password, password. Word. Like, oh, well, you must go free. Like, I'm sorry. That no. is unacceptable. Dumb, dum, 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 dum. Especially when it comes... When you're literally... Prime Minister. <laughs> Prime Minister. And like, I'm not giving you the information you need because I... No, I actually, I forgot my password. Sorry, that you should... That should not be allowed. That's that is, not that, allowed. That's not... A, you should not be allowed to use that as an excuse when you, the stuff that they're trying to get off of well, you... Well, we know why. It's like because they're, they're, incriminating it's, as fuck. Yeah, it's because he's squirming. Yeah. We know why that is. It's trying it's to buy he, time. Yeah, he's biding time, hoping that some person comes in and saves the day. Saves the day. I do think it is shocking that the literally... Like the last, well, I mean, Liz Truss wasn't even really a prime minister, was she? So let's say the prime minister before her, like, is being literally investigated for actual, like, hateful crimes. And we haven't had, like, a general election triggered or, like, sanctions put on the Tory parties or, like, clearly this is a systemic problem within the party. Yeah. If the top person is doing it, what are the other people that we don't know about behind the scenes being able to get away with? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Like, I don't know. The thing is, the the weird thing about politics is it's you can kind of think of it... It was once described, not sure I would agree, but kind of do, show business for ugly people. Mm -hmm. It's very, (laughs) look at what's happening here, ignore that Mm -hmm. behind the stage. Mm -hmm. And it's very, like... It's like, I don't know the name of everyone in, in a position of power in this country. Like when you hear someone being like, oh, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Foreign Exchange Minister of Pussy is doing this. <laughs> and I'm like, who the fuck is that? Yeah, and why yeah. are they allowed to be yeah. doing all this? Yeah. No, I agree. It's, it's, it's there's, Scandalous. There's, there's lots of shadowing and like smoke screens and everything. And like, I don't like it. Makes me upset. Everything is different. I think about it too much. My blood does boil. But I do think if you're in a position of power, especially like it's the same thing with the police. I do think like ACAB. Um, I think that if you decide to go for something in which you have a level of authority, you kind of have to be a person that's like, you have to be better than the rest of us. Yeah. That's the point. Or at least try to be better. Try to be. Try. Don't just be like, oh, you're actually a rotten. Yeah. Like, just try and be better, please. Well, it's, 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 Stop messaging me on Instagram about having illegal chem sex with f***ing evidence you've confiscated. Oh, Personal anecdote there. Personal anecdote from Tie me. Tie me up and piss on me. Can that, you believe I get that from police officers well, in no, the Met I Police? I send it to you. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you are the Met Police. Uh, yes, I am. A-cab. Uh, uh, <laughs> cops, uh, yeah. Tie yeah. me up and call me A-cab. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ACAF. <laughs> No say. Well, I wouldn't put it past them. No. Me. Talking about the the mask coming off and doing or being obsessed. The fact that like in Italy they're having the like lesbians are having their names taken off oh, bloody like yes! birth certificates the of Kathleen their children. Stock and being now, like actually biological reality might actually not be everything. And after saying all this time that biology might biology also, and all of a sudden for someone who is like Kathleen Stock who doesn't want any of that she cross dresses all the time oh, wearing suits. How dare you? The thing is as well is like the LGBT alliance been very silent on this. Isn't that funny? Oh, 
yeah, it's almost they, like there's no gays there. No, it's almost like they want to be uh, actually hating on LGBT people as a whole mm-hmm. and they're using this as a, a thing. But like, even Posey Parker, Posey Parker ag- agrees that this, this should be a thing. Yeah. Like saying, that, like, oh, I think biology really matters and that there shouldn't be lesbian parents. It's like, but now you're actually going against lesbians. So It is quite interesting though. I have seen um, a few examples, especially on Twitter. For some reason, all of this information seems to come from Twitter. You I mean X? X now, yeah. <laughs> X. My X! I, uh, <laughs> I don't really see a lot of transphobia and like turfism coming from anywhere else, really. It just seems to be like the mainline feed is... Yeah. Twitter. Oh, occasionally I see it on Instagram now. It has yeah. kind of filtered over. Everyone in the GC thing who was like a like a staunch lesbian, I have started to see like a couple of tweets of people being like, I'm just not gender critical anymore because I just can't believe they're coming for lesbians. Oh, as like so if like that it's wasn't the leopard happen. eating face party. Yeah. Like, I voted for the leopards eating faces party. I just can't believe the leopards are eating my face. Oh, so Maybe stupid. Maybe we shouldn't vote for it's them. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. Ironically, though, we. I remember when we, this, when like the turf phenomenon first started happening. I was like, we are the smallest part of the wedge because the rest of us are gonna are after us. Yeah. The rest, yeah. like, eventually it was then like, actually, all gay people are wrong. Yeah. Everyone. LGBT should die. Yeah, it's so stupid. It started a couple of months ago with like the was it the LGB Alliance were like actually bisexual people oh, aren't yeah, even. They, they, were, they were starting to come against be like, bisexual people. Talk about Drag Race. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the finale? Yes. What did you think? A bit naff. A bit naff. Yes. Yeah, so a bit naff. This I did find the whole concept of a top two a little bit of a weird one. It was so I. Uh, this season this I mean this whole if you don't watch Drag Race All-Stars I apologise but this whole season of Drag Race All-Stars has been very it's been like some stars yeah like I, I know it sounds like catty and mean but like it was it was very lacklustre I think uh, what actually suffered the problem with All-Stars 8 is that All-Stars 7 was so good so good it was so like good astra- like One of All-Stars the best 7 ones. should have been we're stopping this format now yeah like, and this do is something the else end. we're gonna transform it into a different franchise Oh, pardon me. Because All Stars A, although it was like 200k winning and then 60k for the online fame games, yeah. it was like a disjointed competition within a competition because I don't watch Untucked. No, I don't either. Just, no. It's just like I don't have time to watch three hours of content every week. Yeah. So it was a little bit like. All of this whole storyline, if you're not watching the mainline show, immediately lost. Yes. Immediately pointless. Yes. Like, what, what, don't even know any of all that. But the the amount of stress that the uh, competitors must have been under that there was like Heidi left yeah. and then the, like the next Kahana episode Kahana almost. was like almost gonna go and then yeah. RuPaul had to be like stop destroying my show you're yeah, ruining oh, yeah. my career that, that, when when RuPaul came in to like, like come sit down that was that was, was production like, 100% yeah, that was, like, that, was no that. that was no way in hell that was no way in hell him being like I actually care about you that was shit, my show's going a bit crap. I yeah. need to fix this now yeah. so I'm going to lose money. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do also find it weird, some of the choices for competitors. I mean, I understand that, like, Jimbo is... is well, Jimbo is causing controversy with the breastplate. Well, the thing is, the, we already knew that Jimbo was going to win when he got cast on the All yeah. Stars because it was the first what, time that international... Times. Yeah, it was the first time an international queen has been on the main line of All Stars. And because this was just after... Jimbo was uh, eliminated from UK versus the world. Yeah. So they would have filmed it really soon yes, after it yes, happened. Yes. That you already knew that when Jimbo was going on to this, RuPaul brought him on because he was like, I want you to win. I actually like, want you to win. You could see that. That was, it was, I, I, I mean, we tend to know generally early on, like who could, like, who are going to be the fan, like who are going to yeah. be the fan who the production favorites are. But like going into this, we knew from the very first episode, well, All Stars Jimbo always, was going to win this. All Stars is always RuPaul's favorite race. Yes. It's always RuPaul's favorite. Yeah. I mean, technically they all are, but like, I feel like in the mainline seasons, it's a bit more exciting in terms of like, well, you just don't know because yes. you don't know these people. Yes. But like, if you look at all of the Hall of Famers, maybe apart from the double win, because there was a huge talk around that point of uh, like racism in the franchise. Yes. Being like, yes. well, there's no black winners. So yeah. this is a problem. Yeah. Which I completely see because mm-hmm. the drag race fandom is excessively oh, racist it, uh, and horrific. hateful. Horrific. Some of the worst people ever. Like, oh, drag race fans are oh, absolutely why? abhorrent. Like, it's so weird. Like, I've never really, like, it's filtering out to other fandoms now. Yes, you just yes, see people yes. having the worst toxic takes. But, like, for some reason, men in wigs has caused this, like, huge uproar. Oh, it's it's so like the worst weird. thing. Oh, my God. They 
deserve to die. My favorite didn't win, so it's, your whole it's, lineage it's must be exterminated. So weird. It's, it's so weird. Brings that like, why can't you just watch it and enjoy it? Yeah. It's. And I well, don't know I always if maybe say, it's because it's like a really young audience now, and it's just like maybe. And I always say like, I find it weird the people's reactions when people win or go home. It's like I don't understand how you're watching Drag Race in 2023 and blaming and think, the person and <laughs> blaming the person, but also thinking that it has really anything to do now with much talent or who they yeah. like. It, most of it now is production yes. and showing. It's a show. It's yes. a reality. TV show exactly it's they're making you feel a way they want you to feel yeah and I think the way we can say this for sure is that when there's someone who's a problem on the show they can rearrange the entire show to edit an entire contestant out yes and so that's very much how you can say oh everything is production everything is production because everything. There's, there can be an entire person there every week that you'll never see because yeah. they've edited them out yeah oh yeah also I mean, they've got I... one coming out next time oh, we, oh god UK is gonna be interesting Spoiler. yeah we're not gonna say anything oh. but wait for the UK there's going to be an interesting in, development going on weirdly enough I'm actually interested in watching um, I always prefer I always, I always prefer the UK one just because it's our culture it's relatable so like, yeah. we understand the pop culture references we understand all the jokes that they get made so I think naturally we're more excited but yeah, yeah. the new all the new season of UK UK Drag Race is going to have an interesting thing happen yes. that a lot of people behind the scenes know. And, Hugely problematic. Um, and I mean, anyone who's been around in the London scene has heard about this. Oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I mean, both of us have heard about mm -hmm. it before we even saw it. When yeah. I saw that their name was announced, I was like, I was really? shocked. I was shocked. Really? I was shocked. Had no one done any, like, Clearly, this like yeah. American production team came over and went, "You look lovely. Yeah. Come on our show." Without yeah. being like, "Oh, hang on, should we talk to the locals mm -hmm. about who these people are?" I don't understand why you have the All Stars versus the World ones, but you said you're also going to do like a a global. a global All Stars, but then you still just went and did All Stars eight after seven. I'm like, I don't understand. Like, it's like they've lost their sort of the point the point of what's going on and they've just filmed All Stars 9 yeah I so, was going to say I'm sure they've just I've, I think I saw the uh, like cast like rumoured cast reveal it does look quite good I just I I'll just give it a watch because I actually appreciate the concept of the show but I, I do find it's there's being, too many it's there's, oversaturated it's now I do find the All Stars like franchise needs to be like every third season or something it yeah. needs to give you an opportunity like the idea that someone can be on their season and then immediately on All Stars oh yeah this, what's the point weird, what is the it's point like, you have to drive tension and drive yes. want and need yeah. if you give people too much of everything they have no interest in being anything yeah and like I love that there's loads of international seasons because like when people mind yes. there's too many international seasons or there's too many it's like yeah but that's not actually meant for you that yes. is meant for the people yeah. who live yeah. in that country Absolutely. who are then going to be represented yeah. so and I love Love. dive in and dive out exactly. as you please and I love that but when like the main series that started it the American one the main one is like having all of these different things going on I'm just, it's really confusing it's, it's like oversaturated. This, you're gonna ruin your own franchise because yeah. you're overkilling it and like I'm not saying that not, these people don't deserve another chance to go into All Stars, but some of the people that have been cast on this it one it just feels like it, season round two yeah it didn't feel very exciting and it was like, oh, okay, this to me now is like, oh, I'm actually starting to get to stage now where I don't want to watch anymore. Yeah, there was actually a point where I was like, I'm not interested in watching. Well, the I missed episodes. a couple. I missed a couple episodes yeah. of this season, and I was like, that that I remember like a few years ago, that just didn't happen. Oh, I, I was, was like, no, I have like, to watch all need, of need, them. Need, need, yeah. need, need, especially with All Stars because some of the earlier seasons of All Stars were so fascinating. All Stars I mean, Two, was All Stars one of the best Two is the ever. most iconic one yeah. ever. Yeah. I'm excited to see one of the rumored cast for All Stars Nine, though. I don't know grand. what's going to happen with the Drag Race franchise at the I moment. The but global I just, all stars is a thing that starts to happen. Though. Yeah, I just think they should. St why do all stars versus the world season two on in in? Why do you keep UK? bringing it to the UK? They can't win anything. They can't win anything. What is the point? But it's like the same as um, uh, Queen of the Universe. Oh, they stopped. That just they? like they Bombed. they they did like season two of Queen of the Universe, which is like a basically X Factor, Waited but for like two singing years to release it. <laughs> Waited two years. So basically, it's like a, yeah, it's like a singing competition, like Pop Idol, X Factor, anything for drag queens. Yeah. So. They released like episode, I think it was like week four and they were doing one a week. And then all of a sudden they just put the rest of the season in one go all on Paramount Plus and was just like, okay, it's canceled. It was so weird. But if you actually watch Queen of the Universe, the speed of what they were doing things, it just felt like a money laundering scheme or something because yeah. it, there was like zero thought out. And like it was the audience members in the show which is like an audience member, like what eight? There was like a hundred people in this room, or whatever, who chose all the winners, who chose everything, and what it was very concept. strange. It was very strange. I don't know what they were doing with Queen of the Universe. You had the potential to make a really good singing drag competition, and it was just I wonder like if it's maybe, rushed yeah. and weird. I wonder if it's maybe one of those things where it was like 
the idea of it was like a pilot to sell a bigger project coming from it or something. Yeah. I wonder if in a few years we'll hear not Queen of the Universe, but it'll be like something else that incorporates some sort of like. But it was the fact that like it. the prize money was two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Like that, and it was, huge, yeah. like, that's... And it was filmed in the UK, wasn't yeah, it? So you actually yeah. got that. Yeah, it wasn't just like taxes. Yeah, yeah. great because it was Graham Norton who hosted it. So oh, it? yeah, but there's a drama because Mel B was being like a bit transphobic in this one. Like she seemed to have a real issue with this one trans contestant. She kept giving her like quite harsh critiques and it was really weird that she was like so oh, intense at this point her. any sort of like middle-aged woman who was famous once i'm like oh you're a turf mm-hmm. you just <laughs> like of course you are turf and proven otherwise it is, yeah it literally it does feel a bit like that i mean i know that sounds kind of gross to say but like anytime i hear one of the loose women posting an article about something i'm like you're clearly a turf oh yeah always it, a tough. It, it, it's balmy but it's just deranged what i always find strange as well is is like when it comes to the uk not getting prize money the show is worth so much money could the show not themselves put their own prize money up no, because you're not like because because of the network it's filmed on. Well, yeah, but like even if it's like donated from someone else. Do you know what the funny thing is? There is other TV shows on the BBC that do give out prize money, mm. so I don't quite understand what the concept is there. But I find it shocking that the BBC has Drag Race anyway. Yeah, I think it's weird, the most like weird. a most irreverent thing to happen. Irreverent is that the word? No, most like deranged thing to happen mm-hmm. because we literally have BBC articles coming out every single day, being like these, f-ing tra- yeah, yeah, and then they're like. Watch Drag Race. Per Channel say. 4 should have had it, but Channel 4 are being weirdly like anti LGBT at the moment as well. It's just everywhere. Everyone, right now. Everywhere. 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 It's so weird. Like, no one is standing by us. And it's very interesting, especially this last Pride Month, to witness how many have chosen not to. Because yeah. it's like, remember that. Yeah. Because we were critiquing most of these companies for doing it anyway because we felt like it was performative. Yes, yes, yes. And then yes. as soon as you show that you are performative, it's like, oh. Snatched. I'll remember Snatched. that forever. Pussy. Cut it off, girls. Cut it. Cut off like a dirty limb. Can um, I end on a wonderful note to this podcast? You're pregnant. Yes. Oh my god, it's a miracle wound transplant. Jessica Alves is crazy. It's Carthulu. <laughs> <laughs> Just happened. Gareth I was gonna say the Kraken, but it no. came out as Cthulhu. It's almost like you said Gareth Cthulhu. It's like, Gareth, Gareth Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Yes, yes he yes. won the X. He factor. finally won, but he didn't, did he? No, no. It was Pop Idol, no. wasn't it? Pop Idol, yeah, yeah. The Puff one instead. Pop cunt. They're, well, they're both gay anyway, aren't they? I don't think Gareth Gates is Isn't gay. Is he bi? No, maybe, maybe, maybe they, maybe they fucked on stage. Probably. Yeah. I sat on Will Young's lap once. Three way with Simon Cowell. Awful. Oh. <laughs> Did you see his Listerine thing? He was like, "Excuse me, you stopped making you this. Stop- Can I have it back?" And then died. Yeah. Well, I mean, it does look like he has, mm, so yes, why not? Yeah, his, no, so it. my wonderful way to end today's podcast is I actually did bring it up in the last one before chaos ensued. Final before Fantasy ca- 16. Uh, sorry. I was saying how much yeah. I loved it before it literal the, chaos uh, ensued. I've like rearranged death. my pops. If you didn't watch the last episode, I, my pops fell over at the end. But um, I've rearranged them now so they won't fall over and I've secured it halfway up. So. Yes. So I want to talk a little bit about Final Fantasy 16 because I thought it was an excellent addition to the franchise. Per se. Actually was. It gave me all the fantasy of everything that I've wanted from a good mainline game. Good. 15 was an interesting one because it kind of spent 10 years in development hell. When it was released, I kind of felt like this isn't worth 10 years waiting for. Healthy. Uh, no, and then they tried to gatekeep like some mainline story things behind DLC. Oh, so, I hate that. It's so I know, stupid. I know. So they listened to that and Final Fantasy 16 is a completely self-contained game and they are not bringing out DLC for it. This is oh, okay. like a fully realized self-contained game and I loved the storyline from start to finish. It was heartbreaking. I got emotional. It felt adult in certain parts and not just like panda to children. It was like, oh, oh my God, there's lots of swearing and gore. Raw and dogging. Like difficult relationship navigation. There was also naked muscle boys and twins. Oh. everywhere it was great at one point it did feel a little bit femboys versus farmers but that's fine from from something like or final fantasy boy farmers well, no there were no femboy farmers <laughs> it was femboys versus farmers you could tell who were the femboys oh, and who were the yes, farmers track to my hole daddy such a good game i loved the villain the villain was actually quite horrific to look at which i feel like sometimes in um like japanese rpg games everyone can look a bit too pretty and you're like no yes, i'm on your side because you're it. really glamorous mm. this one was actually horrendous to look at and so it kind of gave you the real like <gasps> no if you actually did come across this situation Ooh. it would make you kind of go eh, so i would say i know 
know that you're not fully into Final Fantasy, but if it ever comes on offer for twenty pounds, grab it and see if you I like have it. Well, you said this about Final Fantasy VII remake, and I hated it. Yes, unfortunately, so... you did, and you. It is better than the VII remake, I would say. Yeah. But I did like the fact that within Final Fantasy sixteen, I don't know if this is because I'm obsessed with the franchise. I saw very much like mechanics they can use in remakes of other older games. So okay. When if they ever make Final Fantasy nine the remake, I can see some of the aspects they might carry across that they potentially tried out in 16 and I'm very excited for okay. it if they do I really hope I would be so. more inclined to play it if it was on Xbox yeah well yeah this is the thing I'm an Xbox I person I actually didn't so like the uh, I actually feel like the PS5 was not strong enough to run the game because it, it constantly put it at a weird like 40 frames per second oh. it was very jarring to enjoy and I sort of at some points I was like this like if I, I really have to like concentrate to get past it yes. it's one of the reasons why I don't really like games on the Switch because they're stuck at 30 oh, yes, and I'm yeah. like oh it kind of like takes me out of the immersion yeah. Yeah. But um, no, when they, they eventually will be releasing for Xbox and PC and I will be playing again mm -hmm. because I really want to play it in 60 frames per second just to like really get the full fantasy. But I'm excited to see where the franchise goes now because this has been a hit. It's literally mm -hmm. got like 90 out of 100 on every oh, like, wow. review okay. platform. Like everyone has loved this game and the voice actor for Clive is hot as fuck. Oh, well. so yes. if, we could, if we could talk about video games and I'll do a little thing yes, before we go. go. For it. Um, I am so unbelievably excited for Mortal Kombat 1. Oh, yes. So they released all the gameplay, some of the gameplay and trailers for the new Mortal yes, Kombat game coming out in me. September. Oh, so it's September. Oh, that's quick. So, I mean, if you didn't know, if, if you're Brett's kind of new, or don't, a link from that. Ooh, if you didn't know me very much, I'm a huge Mortal Kombat fan. I've actually dedicated my right leg to Mortal Kombat tattooing, and my whole leg is to do with Mortal Kombat. So, I've been a huge fan since I was a kid. So, they're releasing a new Mortal Kombat, and they've basically reset the time uh, the timeline of the game. Yeah. So, they've gone back to Mortal Kombat One, and they're basically like uh, it's starting, a remake essentially, starting isn't from the it? beginning. They're basically reboot. It's basically uh, I think the thing is, I think it's actually very clever because the game has been around now for thirty years, and it's like. They've done so much with it that at the very end of the last game, um, Liu Kang becomes like the new elder god of like time oh, itself. Oh, okay, cute. And so they've kind of gone, well, now we can kind of reset the timeline mm. and start from like the very beginning again and make an entirely new... I like that though. Way. I like that, yeah. Instead of like trying to drag... Because sometimes things stay for too long where like they've clearly not planned for it to be this long yeah so then the well, storyline but gets bonkers yeah, this is like, happening in world of warcraft is it it's oh, okay. every with every like we, we literally went to the land of death and now they're like death but with dragons <laughs> and it's like okay no like something needs to happen something needs here. to happen so i'm really happy that more have kind of done this thing um the characters the roster so far looks really cool yeah um and they're bringing back homelander homelander is being one of the this? dlc people is gonna be there so they're, they're they've brought back a lot of characters that haven't been seen for a long time which i'm excited about it's my um, in it. I guess not because it wouldn't have been Motaro I'm not sure if he is part I don't think they've released Motaro no I'm not sure is there any of he the might be half a... dragons so Kintaro Goro I don't, they've only released some of the roster so I, they haven't released know, all of it I yet. think Goro was the one that opened up my eyes to the fantasy of big giant muscle boys oh with really with chests. four arms oh uh, please <laughs> if Louis grew four arms I'd be like yeah strangle me harder I love it <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'm like more more pecs for me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. That there's a news. There's a nice little. Um, it's called cameo fighters, where basically within like a fight, you can string combos where you press like oh, I think it's one of the arts, oh, one of the top buttons, and like your cameo fighter comes and does like an attack. So like. Oh, that's one of so their like special a mini moves. summon or something. So it's like a mini summon, so oh, like you can chain cute. combos. Like and because of that, it does mean that combo systems can now, is like times themselves. Yeah, like, it's expanded. Because there's so many different variations of what you can do. So there's like little cameo fighters where you do a combo, you press a button, and then their cameo fighter will come in and do like a special move where then you can chain other combos to it. So it's opened up battling mechanics mm. so much. I'm just praying. I've said this before, like ages ago, but I'm just praying they have a conquest mode. I want a yeah. conquest mode. To be honest, I have heard a lot of people talking about like more than just a fighting game. Yeah. They want it to be more than like. I feel like people's attention spans for fighting games now is ch like the market's changed. It's only the hardcore people that'll yeah, play it for a long time. Really, so so like, you're not going to make any money if you only approach hardcore pe hardcore fans, really. Yes. So I'm hoping that they have listened to the fan feedback. I mean, they do seem like they pay attention to it. Like yes. they're constantly on Twitter, yes. for yeah. example. Oh yeah, so, Ed Boon is constantly tweeting. So you would things. hope that then somehow it's like gotten into the game or yeah. something like it. Because so my favorite Mortal Kombat game is Mortal Kombat Deception. Mm. And that's from 2004 and it was on the Xbox and PlayStation and everything. Um, yeah, I had it. And so my the reason I love this game is because they had the main fighting arcade mode. So one-on-one, -on -one, it had a story mode and stuff and you could go through. They also had a conquest mode, which was like an adventure mode where you like a normal 
adventure mode where you go through different worlds and try yeah. to find the talk to people, do missions and everything. And I loved that. Loved well, that. Well, yeah, breathed new life so into much. what essentially was like almost like a 2D, 3D fighter. Yes. And then they had like puzzle combat, which is basically like puzzle fight from Street Fighter, but they made a more combat version. They had a chess mode. And then Armageddon had like a racing kart game. And I loved all these little stupid little yeah, side yeah. games that were really fun. Like, so I'm just hoping that they have more than just one on one because I loved more combat 10 and 11, but I got bored of it quite fast because it was only one-on-one -on -one fighting and that was it i feel and like I just, this is kind of how i'm feeling with pokemon they are just yeah. at the moment releasing the same game with different sprites in yeah. and it's a bit like oh. so i'm just hoping they have a little bit more content yes because i want to have a long game rather than like enjoying it for a few months and then being like okay i'm kind of a bit tired a bit with this yeah what uh, did street fighter six Street Fighter Six has like a conquest. It's called Something World. Like it. It's called World Tour. Yeah. Um. So it's essentially like that. So I'm enjoy. I am enjoying Street oh, Fighter Six as if like I'm playing an well, older then it, game. As as the idea that they that their main competitor, Street Fighter. I mean, I guess Tekken was also probably their main competitor, but I haven't really heard anything. Tekken's about Tekken kind for of ages. Tekken's kind of like a different game though. It's like has when I think of the main three fighting games though, it's Tekken, Mortal Kombat. Street Fighter. Yeah, but I know I agree. Um, like, but I feel PlayStation, like it, it, Xbox, PC. Tekken has like a different fighting style where I yes, don't like I to compare them because they're very different in mechanics. So it's well, I, there's no like superpowers or anything, is there? It's very it's, like actual fighting. Yeah, it, it, they've kind of apart all from the, ogre. All, all this, <laughs> oh, I mean, there's magic in it for sure. Yeah. But like, I feel like Tekken has a it's, it's a very different style of fighting game. I consider but even Tekken had like a conquest style mode. They had that like side. Oh, I love like, yeah, Tekken. I love Tekken three thing. when they had That's that. That's the one the, that I'm thinking Tekken of. Tekken three when go. they had the, that mode. But I also because I was a massive fan of Soul Calibur, but Soul Calibur's kind of died now. But I used to compare Tekken more to Soul Calibur because the amount of uh, moves and the system only reason. Why I don't compare them. Well, maybe I do kind of, is because uh, Soul Calibur was Xbox exclusive for ages, wasn't it? No. Was it not? No. Oh. No. Did it ever receive like. I don't know. It just it just didn't enter my zeitgeist for some reason. I don't Soul know. Calibur. It wasn't it, did, it wasn't as popular as everything maybe else. That's why, yeah. Um, but I used to love a fighting game called Evil Zone. That was my hands down favorite PlayStation fighting game. One that. game released, never made again. Oh, dead now. <laughs> so good, so good. It was called Eretsvaju in oh. Japanese. If anyone's ever played it, the lead demon was called Ihadolka, and she has long white hair. What a surprise! Oh, get a great, get, <laughs> get a day off. <laughs> I know, but yeah, she was my favorite. Loved her. She was part dragon. Oh, there you well, go. There you go. That's the tea, girls. That's the gout. That's the clunge. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. Yes. Um, I'm glad that you are enjoying the longer episodes as well. I'm not editing them down to like make an hour slot now. I'm kind of just letting them go. Just let them go. I mean, when I first started making over an hour long content, I was like, no, it has to be 59 minutes. Can't be up now. I'm like, an hour and 11 minutes? Uh, yeah, yeah, go. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So Enjoy. I'm glad that you guys really enjoyed the last one. And I want to just say a little quick note before we do go. I do, and I, I can speak for both of us, that we really appreciate how much you actually enjoy watching these. And I will um, block you. And Lux, I will block you. Yeah. So I know I said it before but like we do truly um <laughs> Really appreciate, appreciate it. Because, you know, when we started this, we had no idea how big it was going to get. Getting like 100k views on a podcast episode like this, which is long, which is very different than what we normally would do, is so exciting because it's something that we really love doing. It's a brand new thing. And I didn't realize it was going to be so well received when we first started because yeah. it was so different to my normal content and especially to Luxo's normal content. Because, we, you know, none of us, we don't do anything like this before. No, no, so, no, no. Um, the oh, fact that, like, I have a... When we first started to plan it, it was a very different Oh, very thing. different, Very yeah. different thing. Yeah. And then eventually we were just like, should we just, just make it a podcast? Yeah. Like, just keep going. Yeah. So it's been, what, four or five years now since we started it? And because it was before... The, it was for lockdown. It, it was, was before lockdown, It was like, it? Like 2019, I think. Yeah, when we had yeah. that fun little lav mics and everything. It wasn't even, like, professional. But... Lav mics. <laughs> oh, but, and you um, could hear every rustle and crustle. You could hear every and, rustle, like, everything. Breath and terrible. Be like, oh, she's so, dead. This was a this was a little passion project we did that turned out to be a lot more successful than we necessarily originally anticipated, and we're so thankful and grateful that you guys enjoy this. Um, and yeah, yes, I couldn't have put it better, my cat. So thank you so much for watching. <laughs> um, of course, I'll put all of Luxarius links and everything in the description, so you can go check out her thank channel you. as well. Make sure you go thank check her out. We need to make sure we do this more often. I know. We, we say, <laughs> Every time someone else appears in our videos, we have to we be like, this is who this we, is. It's because it becomes so common for us to collab yeah. with each other. It's almost like... Well, it's like when we did that with the ultimate sin with Novimpia. We were like, so, hello, what's yeah. happening oh, today? Yeah. Instead so, of being like, this is who they people. are. Yeah. Yeah. We did interviews that were all terrible hosts. Oh, yeah, I know, really bad. I just, it's because we were kind of in a hurry that day. And yeah. We were just kind of like... Well, because they were like three hours late. <laughs> yeah, I know. And we were like late for dinner and all sorts. Yeah, right, so yeah. we were like, oh, quick. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Yes. Please hit the like button. 
button. Yes. Subscribe and hit the notification bell. And of course, share it on do, threads. Share it on threads. Um, if you do listen to it, of course, on iTunes or Spotify, anything, please give us like a like a nice review. Yes. Um, because that of course helps a out nice as well. Star. A nice clotted cream. Um, bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>